times in my head I couldn't get away from it. And uh, I first had the thought months and months ago back in the summer. And I felt like it was for this church and is and for my church, you know, my brethren. And, and uh, I got up and I was sitting on the side of the bed. I don't know if I was getting ready to go to work or what. And the thought came to my mind. I remember this old boy was about to win a singing contest. And they said, anything you want to tell the ones voting for you? And he said, let's keep it together. <laughs> So I was sitting on the side of the bed, and I thought, Colter, let's keep it together. <laughs> and uh, we've got a lot to keep together. So first step is you get saved. First step, you believe God, and it's counted to you for righteousness. And that's the first step for each and every one of us, is you believe God, and it's counted to you for righteousness. You believe that His Son died for your sins, and that you ask Him in, and He comes into your heart, and He dwells therein, and you're made a new man. And uh, you get saved, and that's a wonderful feeling. Uh, Psalms 32, verse 1 and 2, it said, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile, no guile, no deception. I'm glad there's no guile in me. I'm glad that my transgressions are covered and that he imputeth not iniquity to me. He took it on his own shoulders and bore him on an old rugged cross. Oh, that I might live, that I might have an expectation. And that's one of the things I was thinking of. As Christians, we got an expectation. And it says, the hope of the righteous shall be gladness. But the expectation of the wicked shall perish that's Proverbs 10 28 I'm here to tell you you ain't got nothing you don't have an expectation if you're not righteous and righteousness is from God there's none righteous no not one Whew, glory to his name I'm righteous today not for nothing colder did but because I accepted a free gift brought to me and then you get saved and you just won't tell everybody it's good. I remember I got saved when I was six years old. <laughs> Don't tell me it wasn't real. I remember going down the hall telling my first grade teacher about it. <laughs> Woo, glory! Want to tell somebody? Yes. Oh. <laughs> first thing you're going to realize there's a lot more to being saved than just being made new. There's a lot more to being saved than going to heaven. You're going to look around with them freshly opened eyes and you're going to see there's a war waging and you got two options. You can just sit there content that you're going to heaven while all of them around you perish or you can wage war back in 1 Timothy 1 18 and 19 this charge I com commit unto thee son Timothy, that's Apostle Paul Paul wrote him a letter with the Holy Ghost according to the prophecies which went before on thee that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. Yes, sir. Let's keep it together. We're going to move on to Ephesians here in just a minute. And yeah, we know the suit of armor and everybody thinks of it keeping us safe. But you know you can fight back. Yeah, there's some parts of that armor we'll get to in just a minute. You can fight back. And in verse 19 of 1 Timothy, it says, uh, uh, Timothy 1, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck. You cling to that faith and you war a good warfare. That's how you keep it together. You don't quit. You don't sit idle. That's how you keep it together. We have an expectation. And you can redeem that expectation. Psalm 62, 5. My soul wait only upon God for my expectation is from Him. Everything we're going to wage warfare with is from the living God. He's the one that's going to convict the souls. He's the one going to save us souls. But we got a job to tell them about Jesus. That's our part in it. He lets us take part in His glory. Yes. Oh, we'll turn on over to Ephesians. Sometimes I have a hard time. I shake. I get a little excited. <laughs> oh, so Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verse 10. Very familiar. Very familiar. Preacher went over it a little bit a while back. He covered one of the white weapons we're going to do some fighting with. <laughs> Finally, my brethren, the strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 
For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. All of a sudden, when you get saved, you're going to start seeing these things, things you never knew, things that are trying to keep you from Jesus. You're going to see them. They're going to be trying to even pull you who are saved, who are redeemed. They want to hinder you in the fight. They want to get in your way. These dark things from on high, of the, their own own highs. But I'm telling you, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You know that preparation of the gospel of peace when you got something on your shoes. Yeah, you can run away from that old roaring lion, but you can run at him too. You can take that gospel of peace and you can go down your neighborhood. You can knock on doors. You can tell them Jesus loves them today. Oh, glory to his name. That's one of the things you can wage war back with. You don't have to flee. You can march towards the enemy. Yes, you can. Oh, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. You've got these things that'll keep you safe, that helmet of salvation. Dear brother, put that on this morning. Yeah, boy, you ain't got nothing to worry about now. Got that breastplate of righteousness. He's deemed righteous in the eyes of the Almighty because of the Almighty's precious Son made away. Now he gets to slip on them, them feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. He got this, and then he gets to lay hold of the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. This right here, this unerring, oh, this Word of God that is, it cannot be altered. It is forever, and it's God's holy Word. And there's one more thing that we can take the fight to the enemy with praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching that too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. That's what we got. We got shoes with the preparation of gospel and we got a sword of the Spirit. This here word of God and we got a prayer. That's all you need. It's that simple. You won't take a fight to the enemy. That's all you need. It's that simple. That roaring lion going about. Yes, sir. <laughs> he don't like that old sword of the Spirit none. Defeats him every time. Yeah, something pointy. <laughs> Glory. Oh, so you gird up in that armor and you, you decide you want to join the fray. Let's keep it together. What do you got to keep together? You're armored up now and you got the means to defend what you got against the devil and against the world and yeah, against your own flesh and in a war against you as hard as any of these will. The devil and the world, yeah, they'll raise up again you with your own flesh, that old man. He's going to be right there with you till you die and then you'll be parted from him if you're saved. I'm glad I'm parted from that old man. I'm glad I'm a new man and I'm glad that with the grace of God, you know you can yield your members to righteousness if you just, oh, you just lean in. Oh, you can yield this old body that wants to be naturally wicked. You know you can do things for God. You can do things for God. Yes, sir. You don't have to sin. You can just put him in submission. Yes, sir. Oh, we're promised tribulations. In First Peter chapter 5, uh, says, uh, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. You know, it rains on the just and the unjust. We're promised uh, that this world won't be easy. That we know there's going to be tribulation. Even Jesus told us, he says, oh, casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same affliction are accomplishing you and your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after, the, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. 
So when these, when these suffering comes on you, what are you supposed to do? Oh, Christians, at least we got something to hang on to when suffering comes upon us. When we have a bad day, we got something to hang on to. That's one of the ways this whole world wants us to fall. It wants to squeeze us. It wants to squeeze us and make it hard for us. Oh, to keep on shining for God. But I'm here to tell you, you keep on clinging to Him and you'll come out as bright as can be, like pure silver. Turn with me over to Job. I'm sorry it's going to be like a, a sword drills tonight. I, ain't a, I wanted a, a one main text and a few supporting, but I'm, I'm sorry. This is the way it was presented to me, and this is the way you're getting it. <laughs> oh... So you got them tribulations come down upon you. Life ain't easy. That's just the way it is. It's going to be hard. There's old Job. Oh, contrary winds came about. And the house fell on his little old babies. There he is. His children gone. And then a sickness falls upon him, covered head to toe with balls, cutting it, scraping them off an old shard of pottery. Oh, everything, his riches gone, everything gone. And his friends come up, and instead of praying for him like good godly friends to do. They accused him. They accused him. They're wondering what he did. Oh, but I like the way he answered. This right here is how you get through your tribulations. This right here, when you go to suffering, this is what you cling to. In chapter 27 of Job, oh, they come up to him and uh, <laughs> oh, moreover, Job continues his parable as God liveth who hath taken away my judgment and the Almighty who hath vexed my soul. All the while my breath is in me and, my, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. He's still got Jesus. You say, how do you know he's got Jesus? Jesus ain't come to earth yet. We'll get to that in a minute. My lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. God forbid that I should justify you till I die. I will not remove my integrity from me. He ain't got nothing left, but he's a clinging to that integrity. My righteousness I hold fast and will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me as long as I live. Oh, <laughs> that's how I know he had Jesus. For we know there's none righteous, no, not one. Oh, glory. We know that there's one whose righteousness is everlasting. If you're going to cling to righteousness, and this here Job, I guarantee you, he knows he ain't righteous. But he's a clinging to the one that is righteous. He won't turn him loose. Glory, there wouldn't have been a Job in the Bible. We wouldn't have this here book in the Bible if he had just done what man wanted, if he had done what the devil wanted, if he had cursed God. Instead, it says right here, my righteousness I hold fast and we know that he got oh God was good to him in the end and he saw him through that mess glory to his name we wouldn't have his book in the Bible if he didn't cling to that righteousness that's what you do when tribulations come you cling to the one that can help you even if he did roll over and do what they wanted how would that help him no sir I'm going to cling to the one that can make a difference the one that formed these hills, the one that formed this body, who oh, puts breath in my lungs, lets me shout the victory, and most of all, sent his only begotten son that I could, whoo, say forever and eternity. Yes, that's who I'm going to cling to. That's how you make it through that there. That's how you make it through the tribulations and the trials of this life. You cling. <laughs> in another place, he says, my Redeemer liveth. Oh, I don't have an old dead God. I got one that can do something. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, that old devil wants to take your testimony. That's what you're fighting for. Yes. Old Job held on to it pretty good. Yes, sir. Oh, and then you, temptations will come. Temptations will come. That's another thing the devil will use again. You. He'll send them old temptations at you. Oh, in Corinth, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Hang on, I've got to find my place. Sorry. In verse 6. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them. As it was written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as as some of them also tempted and were destroyed as serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for in samples. 
And they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Yes, sir. Temptation's going to raise up. New Christians, old Christians, it don't matter. There's going to be temptation to rise up. Oh, there hath no temptation taken you. This is the part I like. But such as is common to man, but God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. You know what scares me? Which temptation scares me? Adultery. That's the one that scares me. You say, you're going to talk about that? Yeah. Jesus in Matthew, he said, to look after a woman and lust in your heart, you've committed adultery already in your heart. I didn't quote it exact. So if that's the case, and you turn over into later in the Bible, and it says that the adulterers and adulteresses, to be friends with the world, is, is uh, enmity with God. There's a barrier there if you let that come in. If you let that come in, there's a barrier there. And that's easy sin. Easy sin. Old King David on the housetop. It I better to pluck that eye out than the damage it caused. He looked over and there's Bathsheba. And he lusted in his heart and he committed adultery. And then we know that the wages of sin is death. And death came next. But it wasn't for him. You see, that's the problem with sin if you get in sin, brothers and sisters. That death may not be for you. Yeah. You'll work death. My little old niece and nephew back yonder, how would it be if they walked in and old Coulter was in sin? My testimony would be gone. It'd be gone. And they, they might not ever get saved because of it. They remember me falling. That's the way it is. You say, that's a hard pill to swallow. It is. It sure is. Oh, David, it started with lust. Then it went to adultery. Then it went to murder. And then those wages of sin, not only that, but that little baby he could do nothing about. Suffered the consequences. But I'm glad that you can forsake your sin and God is merciful to forgive it. And that's what he did. He didn't utterly cast down his man. He held him up with a strong right arm because he turned from it. Repent means to turn from your sin. A good brother came down there and visited David and showed him his sin, and he repented. That didn't undo what happened. That didn't undo the murder. It didn't undo the adultery, and it didn't undo the consequences. So I beseech you, brethren, bear that in mind. You say, well, how do you keep yourself from such things? If he had been in the Word, it way, huh, he had right there the armor of God, the things he could fight back. That tempter rose up before him. If he had laid hold on them things, if he had been in the battle, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have been tempted such. Oh, if he had been up there in the prayer closet, if he had been in God's Word, he wouldn't have been tempted such. He could have fought back. Could have fought back. You say, how do you know that? He's in a war. Yes, sir. In one of my favorite sections of the Bible, First Joshua, you're in war. We're all in war against darkness, against the devil, against sin. He wants us to fall. But you don't have to fall. The devil, you don't have to give ground to the devil. In the book of Joshua, they're getting ready to go in and fight the enemy. They're getting ready to go in and face the wicked people in Canaan. <laughs> oh, and in verse 7 of chapter 1, it says, Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. It's one of my favorite verses. Whenever I'm getting tempted, I, for some reason it springs to mind. Don't look left or right. Keep on marching. Keep on marching. Lay hold of this law. Lay hold of this law. Don't turn loose of it. Keep on marching. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. 
that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. <laughs> you can prosper against the enemy today. You get a hold of this law and you don't look left or right and you keep on marching for Jesus. You can prosper. And then thou shalt have good success. You say, what does success look like? Looks like souls getting saved. If you're not busy looking at sin and you're in a battle, you know when you're fighting in that battle, you're not waging war for yourself. You done got the victory. You done got the victory. You done got Jesus in your heart. You're fighting for the man next to you. You're fighting for them co-workers. That's why you bear good testimony. Just so they can see Jesus in you and you can tell them about it and they might be saved. You see, you're keeping somebody else from death, hell, and the grave. You're not keeping yourself. Once you get saved, you want somebody else to get saved. Yes, sir. Oh. So I told you how to fight off temptation. How to fight off tribulation and trials that are going to come against us. Oh. This last part, I forgot, verse 9 of chapter 1 in Joshua. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Oh, he's with me everywhere. Yes, sir. He's with me everywhere. I just march for him. You just lay hold of this book of the law, and you just step on out there. You see, it's a sword, you see. It don't get dull. Sword of the Spirit. It don't get dull. It's forever sharp. The only time it won't do what it's supposed to do is when you leave it in the sheath. Get it out and use it. You got something to keep. You got an expectation to guard. Yes, sir. Wages of sin is death. Yes, sir. Fight back. You don't have glory. You know another part of your testimony? Oh. There's another part of your testimony. That's just the thing's personal. That's a one-on-one thing. That's the thing we've got to keep straight with ourselves, walking with God. That's, that you, that's a full order by itself, walking just you and the Lord and keeping yourself from wickedness and staying upright. That's a full order. But glory. Man that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth the favor of the Lord. Actually, a man wants the favor of the Lord. You know, a wife's part of your testimony. She is. She sure is. A good one, anyway. Well, bad one, too. <laughs> uh, let's see. If I can find it, I'm sorry. In Proverbs 23. Well... I'm sorry. I lost my place. Well, I'll, I can, I'll misquote it, but I'll try. It says that the virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. You got a virtuous wife. That's part of your testimony. A man's got a wife. All he's got to do is work. Huh? 12 and 4. Okay. Yeah. Virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. If you get a wife that makes you ashamed, it's hard to stand there proud for the Lord God if you're rotten from within. It's hard wearing that armor if your bones is as rottenness. You say, what can you do about it? Oh, I believe the Bible also says in Proverbs, a prudent wife is from the Lord. I believe it says that you love your wife as Christ loves the church. A man goes about loving his wife like I think how good God is to me. I don't. I don't think I'm able to that. <laughs> He's good to me. Tender mercies, yes, forgiveness. A man loves his woman like that, and a woman reverences her husband. That'll stand. That's one thing you can keep together. That's how you keep together. It ain't between a man and a woman's three ways. God's in there. Mark 19, 6. I don't have it marked, but I got the verse in my heart. Sorry. Mark chapter 19, verse 6. Well, 
I guess there ain't 19 chapters in Mark. Oops, I'm sorry. Old devils are messing it up. But it says, uh, what God put together, let no man put asunder. This is the verse I had on my mind. You know, man wants to put it asunder. Man's wicked, naturally. But uh, you lean on the Lord, and you treat her like the Bible says to treat her, and you trust him. I believe that you'll get to keep that part of your testimony. Yeah. Yes, sir. You say, what about them children? <laughs> the inheritance of a good man. And a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. <laughs> that means he carried home that inheritance. Preacher, I thank you a lot. I know Preacher Appreciation Day is gone. Pastor Appreciation Day. But I appreciate you and Miss Eve because you kept it together. I like it. I like it. You kept it together. You say, what do you mean? I'll tell you what I mean. This past summer, I ain't a doubt in my mind that old devil was telling me you had them four grandsons. <laughs> that old devil had to be telling you, you just preach your guts out and they ain't a budging. They ain't a budging. The world's got them. The world's got them. <laughs> That's why I like going to church here. That's why I love my pastor. It's because he knows that the battle is the Lord's. You turn over to Joshua. I don't know if I, if or Second Chronicles, chapter twenty, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast throughout all Judah. He's seen these enemies are coming and they is going to get their families. They is going to get everything they had. The enemies was a marching on them, and he knew that they, that them and themselves were no match for these em enemies are coming in. And I know that our preacher tonight knew that he's no match for the world or the devil, yea, even the very flesh. But he knew one that could take care of it, and he saw it. He told me he fasted because he was feared, just like Jehoshaphat is here. He's afraid it wasn't coming, so he gave it to God, and God worked, and God is mighty. Oh, <laughs> oh, and it says over here in verse 13 of chapter 20 in Second Chronicles, and all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones and their wives and their children. There they are, all they got. Ain't got nowhere to run to. Enemies coming in, multiple armies. And they fasted and they give it to God. You know what happened? They didn't even have to fight a little bit. You see, that's part of that armor, that prayer. He took it to the Lord God in prayer. We can still do that today. That's the same God. He ain't lost nothing. His arm ain't shortened. You got concerns about them grandbabies? I remember, don't tell me my God don't know how to fight. I remember, preacher, that biggest and went down first. <laughs> that oldest boy went down. And then, Lord God, what do you do when you take down a big and you go take the rear guard? <laughs> he took that little one. <laughs> Whoo! Oh, there wasn't nothing left for them middle two but to surrender, and they didn't mind. They got a hold of something good. Yes, sir. The battle is Lord's. Don't tell me he can't do it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's hey, what do you do? You pray, and you get out this old sword. You dust off that place of prayer and you seek God's face. And you remember the battle is his. That's how you fight back. You don't have to sit there and take it. You don't have to cling to your shield and let the breastplate of righteousness keep you. It, it'll keep you personally, but if you want to make a difference, you take up something you can make a difference with. You take up the sword of the Spirit and you hit them knees. Oh, glory. And you go to one that can make a difference. Oh, glory. I'm glad. That uh, old brother got saved. You know that lady, she could have laid there where she is at and not gone out that day. But instead, she took her little gospel track. Undoubtedly, it had a little piece of the sword of the spirit in it. And she took it and she had them feet shod. And instead of fleeing, instead of doing whatever, she went in there and she gave her dear brother oh, a gospel track and it ate at him. Yeah. Yes, sir. I want a war, a good warfare. I want to have a, I want to have a little old family. I want them to be a remnant. I want to be a light to their generation. If the Lord don't come back for then, it could get real bad. We might be in caves, but I want it to get on in that cave. I want it to have a good time. People don't set up altars no more. 
And old Isaac, he went back to his daddy's altar. If you want your children, you want to set them up, oh, you show them the altars. And when you're gone, they'll have somewhere to go back to. You show them it ain't strange to talk to God. Yes, sir. Daddy told me they'd go squirrel hunting. They had his excuse to take a little 22 in the woods. He said, he had put my papa and other men would be a walking. He said, every little bit, they say, this looks like a good place to pray. This looks like a good place to pray. Don't be strangers to God. He's the one who will fix things. Yes, sir. My expectation is from him. My soul wait thou only upon God for my expectation is from him. I got an expectation in this life and the next because I trust him. Yes, sir. I used to worry about getting married, you know. I used to worry. That's something, that's one of my expectations. And you might think this is strange and I, I was worried about it. One night I was laying there and God give me a verse. Or I was reading my Bible and he gave it to me. He don't usually give them to you out of thin air. <laughs> you want to fight back, you got to unsheathe it. Psalms 84. I was laying there. I'd even been, I was so worried about this. Because I'm getting old. Or I think I am. And then in verse 10, let's see, in verse 11, it says, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. This is Psalms 84. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. And it says, O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. And then I remember that. Man that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. He will withhold no good thing. Yes, sir. I ain't worried about it too much. I'm going to be cautious. I don't need no rotten bones. <laughs> so you don't have to just sit there and take what this world throws at you. Fight back. Fight back. Even when it feels like you ain't doing nothing. Even when you can't see. A lot of times God's getting ready to move. About the time we feel like quitting. You just stick to it. Amen. What are you going to do if you do quit? Feel sorry for yourself? Keep taking it to him. Right. Remember the woman that kept going to the judge till they got tired of it. Right. And God loves you. That man didn't even love her. <laughs> yes, sir. You don't have to take it. You want to see souls saved? Fight back. Yeah, our nation can even turn. Don't tell me it can't. Old King Josiah, they had to wade through the apartments of the Sodomites to get to the temple. Didn't even know there was a Bible in there until they found it, cleaning it out one day. It ain't that bad yet. Don't get me wrong, it may wax worse. I know it's going to wax worse. I know it will. But you can show that it don't have to be in your home. It don't have to even in our country. Take it to God. He can do something. Get the parts that you can go on the offense. The sword of the Spirit. Get them feet moving. And take it to Him in prayer. Well, amen. Ain't God good? Keep it together, amen. Keep it together. You know, the Apostle Paul, where the cult's just getting started out, but it sounds to me like he's wanting to start out right so he can finish up right. The Apostle Paul said, I fought a good fight. He didn't just, uh, just lay down on God. He fought a good fight. He kept the faith. And he finished his course. And there will be a crown of righteousness for everybody that does that. Amen. I hope tonight that you'll mind God. 
Uh, it, it, one of the things the Lord has just burned in my heart this Lord's day is how important it is to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. I mean, I'm afraid most of the time in this life we're running too fast and we're running right by the blessing that God wants to, to, to give us and wants to use us to be a blessing to somebody else. Let's bow for just a moment in prayer. Father, thank you tonight for your people. And Lord, I thank you tonight for the privilege to pray. I thank you for what our ears have heard, what our hearts felt tonight. And Lord God, tonight I pray in Jesus' name. Speak to hearts tonight. Speak to hearts tonight. I just want to give you a minute. We're going to gather around the altar here and pray in just a minute. But I want to give you a minute.